Weekends are made for catching up. Here's what you missed from the KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. All right, so we now know who's going to be playing in the Super Bowl in two weeks. Uh, it will be the Kansas City Chiefs, which a lot of folks around here are excited about, a lot of Chiefs fans around here, and the San Francisco 49ers. Should be a pretty good game. Yeah. Two it, really good teams. You know, the Chiefs, uh, the last five Super Bowls have been there four times. That's crazy. It's pretty wild. I know. There are some non-Chiefs fans, I think, that are like, hey. <laughs> Stop talking <laughs> like might that. Might have been pulling for Baltimore and be like, hey, can we just yeah. get somebody oh, new? Oh, my son, Mac. It, like, I was pulling for the Chiefs. He was pulling for the Ravens. And when they lost yesterday, he just went to his room. And, Did he need and a little, he, he had little Mac break? time. Yeah, he needed to go into his cave and process. <laughs> Gotta get to over get this over a little it. bit. Yeah. I, I got it. It was tough. I get it. Tough I feel wanted. you, Mac. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. So you were sharing earlier uh, this weekend about being part of the celebration of life for Gretchen, our listener that mm-hmm. was part of the three Christmas wishes and just passed away recently from our cancer battle. And, um, and just having that experience of just being confronted with, for her, just this legacy. It's incredible way that God used her in so many Mm -hmm. of her students' lives and just people in our community touching multiple generations and that whole question like, okay, what's standing in the way of me living the life? It doesn't look like hers, but that God wants for us. Well, you just see so many lives that she's impacted and just what a light she was and and continues to be. I mean, even after her passing, just um, the difference and impact she's made on so many. And and I was just kind of thinking, you know, what do you value more Christy do you value life more or pain more you know and and what obstacles stand in the way of valuing life to mm-hmm. the fullest and it really caused me to reflect and see um what I focus on um really determines my day it determines at the end of the day my week and then my month and then my yeah. life right yeah and so uh what do I value mm-hmm. basically what I value is what I focus on um, so it just made me really kind yeah. of reflect. And, and I think things like that have a way of doing that, like a, a visitation, a funeral. Yeah, it was interesting when you said, too, like, I'm glad I went mm-hmm. for a lot of reasons. Uh, it struck me because there was a good 20 plus years of my life early on in my life that I just like refused to go to a funeral. Mm. It was just I just wouldn't do it. And so the first funeral I ever went to, I think I was in my early 20s when my grandfather passed away. And which was beautiful. I watched this guy that was, he was a farmer and a school bus driver, lived a faithful, quiet life, and then realized the ripple effect just of him being faithful. And it was super impactful to me, um, just for a variety of different ways. I mean, one, you're saying goodbye to your grandpa, but, yeah. um, but just like, like, what kind of life do I want to live? And uh, what kind of lives do I want to be a part of impacting? And it, it totally shifted for me. From decades of saying, I do not want to go to a funeral, Mm -hmm. to something clicked for me. I'm like, I think we're actually supposed to. I think there's something about that that God uses to kind of make us confront reality and maybe evaluate, okay, where where am I at? Maybe a little course correction Mm -hmm. here or there, Mm -hmm. or maybe even celebrate, man, God, if you can do that through them, what do you want to do through me or for my family or in our community? And and I don't know why, but it seems like a lot of times we we try to steer away from grief and sadness. And maybe that's a reason for me. It was to stay away from funerals, but maybe in the middle of that, God actually wants to like speak to us. Maybe, Maybe we can hear it in a way we could never hear it otherwise. I absolutely agree with that. It, it c- kind of forces you to lean in, you know, the things that are really important in life. And for you, I mean, I, I love that, how you avoided it for so long and then you saw the value. You're like, wait, this really isn't so bad. There, there's something here that we can all grow and learn from. And and I know whenever I went to that visitation, it causes you to reflect on what's really important. And I think you're right. I, th- I think God wants us to do that t- so we can have those moments in our yeah. heart and, and with each other. That's really good. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. You know, Mark, yesterday I um, I got lost. In, really? I know, Sorry. You, I, <laughs> I know you're probably like, I feel like you're lost every day, Christy. I was say, Are you trying it, to... Was this an, an unusual <laughs> event? 
<laughs> no, but it's not the kind of lost you're thinking. Okay. Um, I, I got lost in an activity. Okay. Okay. And it was a beautiful thing. Hmm. And it reminded me of just, you know, it's so important to get lost. <laughs> Which you're good at in so many ways. I know, I know. Basically, it was after school. Obviously, it was a gorgeous day yesterday. And I picked up my son. I said, hey, it's gorgeous today. Let's go play. Um, Get one of your buddies. And do you want to go to the baseball fields? My my son, he eats it up. He loves baseball. And I do, too. Like, I love sports. I love to play ball, anything like that. And so he was like, yeah. And so we go to the baseball field. I put my phone over by the fence. Mm. Good for and you. and I was like, it's just going to be you, me, Mac, and his his buddy Grayson, and we're just gonna we're just gonna play ball, and we did for about an hour and a half, and it was so fun. I did not think about one thing mm. about responsibilities of of work or life or finances or anything. It was yeah. just it was about baseball and these boys and hitting them balls and playing catch and, you know, pitching to them so they could hit. And so good. And we were smiling. And if we messed up, it's like, awesome. That's why Mm -hmm. we're here. We're practicing. And they had such a great time. I had such a great time. And then we're walking back to the car and loading up the equipment and stuff. And I just took a deep breath. I was like, man, that was so much fun. And, And then it hit me. I totally got lost in the moment. I didn't think about anything. Yeah. That, that stresses me out or worries me. And then I realize I worry and stress about too much stuff. All the time. You know. And you're not, you're not checking your phone. Not checking. For the time, phone. the mm-hmm. next message, all that. None of that. It was basically, I knew our time was up when it was dark. Hmm. Right? That's so and awesome. And so I wasn't looking at my phone, nothing. Just not worrying about another message. And I had messages on my phone whenever we got finished. Yeah. And that was okay. I didn't I, have to answer your message right then. I think... I need more things in my life where I get lost, uh-huh. like that kind of lost. Just listening to you talk about that, I'm like, wait a minute, yeah, like why don't why am I not making more time to do something, whether it's with my kids or my wife, or have a conversation with somebody where you, you just it's okay to get lost in it. Well, and what it did for me is it it filled me back up. Like, and this was in the midday, right? I've already worked a a long day. I've been up, but there was a refueling to my soul, which gave me even more energy in the evening. So there's so much power in that. So from now on, when I leave the building, I want you just to yell out, Christy, go get lost. Go get lost. (laughs) The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. So um, two things popped up on my little social media feed. This week, Mm -hmm. actually over the weekend, that uh, I've been just like locked in thinking about for the last couple of days. One of them I actually shared on our morning show, Kale Artsy Morning Show Facebook page. Uh, 11 years ago, this weekend, we met my youngest, Ruth, our adopted daughter, for Mm -hmm. the first time. And I don't need the pictures because they're pretty etched in my mind. I absolutely remember walking into the gate of this orphanage in West Africa and um, hearing these sweet little voices and mm. one of them saying, Ruth, your daddy's here, oh, which wow. was just like, stop me in my tracks <laughs> kind of thing. And, and then seeing her walk up and kind of like, you know, we'd never met each other. Mm-hmm. We'd seen each other over Skype, mm-hmm. right? And so she's a little bit timid, but she trusts me enough to kind of come over and tuck her head into my shoulder. And it's just this powerful mm. moment in my head. And we were thinking at the time, we're like, awesome. We get to meet, we get to hang out, bond for about a week. And in six months or so, we should be able to be back. All the paperwork will be done and we get to bring you home forever. Had no idea that 11 years ago, that meeting would mean four years of just mayhem, paperwork, all this stuff. A lot of our KLRC family have been listener for a long time. Um, we shared some of that, and people were super gracious just to jump in and support us and pray for us. Literally thousands of people that prayed in the middle of all that craziness. Mm. Um, and so now, 11 years ago, to 11 years later, to sit back and be like, God, you were just, man, we had no idea what we were stepping into. We had no idea how hard it was going to be, how messy it would be. And uh, so I've been thinking about that. And then I saw, of all weird things, on my social media feed, this video of a wood press 
pops up. I'm like, what? Okay, why am I getting a wood press? Showing up? I don't woodwork. Yeah, we know, we know you're not woodworking, Mark. Uh, right. Like, <laughs> ain't nobody tried to sell me a wood press. And it was like some video of like how things work when they make pressed wood. And wow. it's this giant press that they put a whole bunch of scraps, little scraps of wood in. And the whole thing was about basically the idea of just when you think the press is done, it's got more to go. And they show it and they like all these little pieces and it and they, you know, compresses it down and you think, okay, surely it's done. And then it has to go even further and press it even harder for it to be strong enough to do what it's supposed to do. Wow. And I keep thinking about that. I'm like, man, there are so many times in life where it feels like, God, you are pressing in here. Mm-hmm. Like surely we must be done. And I think even in the that four years, we had plenty of those days where like, okay, we can't get squeezed anymore here. Yeah. We're like, humanly speaking, we're done. And God was gracious enough because he knew he's like, no, no, I got to, there's more to be done here. In order for this to do what it's supposed to do, I've got to press a little bit harder. And it's easier said now than it was then to look back and be like, okay, it was worth it. I know this God, you were faithful. And I just thought, man, and it's somebody else this morning that's feeling like, I am getting pressed more than I thought I could handle. Mm -hmm. And all I know is this. I know it's hard uh, and certainly painful, but he carried us. He carried us through. He's carried us through the last 11 years. If he can do it for me and our family, I know he can do it for anybody too. Mm. Amen. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. Wednesday morning and we got a full house back in the studio. Hello, everyone. Hello. Boy, good morning. All right. <laughs> I think everyone's ready. Christy's been doing the game day chant already this morning. <laughs> what day is it? <laughs> it's game day. It is time what for the Wednesday game. Here we go. All right. So Battle of Generations. First up, um, welcome Scott, our data guru here at KLRC. He's been hard at work for the last, he's been doing like crazy hours taking care of all of our data here. Always serves our listeners really well. And reps of the boomers, sir. What up? <laughs> oh, wow. He's that kind of boomer. That boomer, very, yeah. not boomer up <laughs> That was very. All right. Andrea will rep the millennials. Hello. Uh, Christy will rep Gen X, of course. Hey, hey. And Chaplain Justin is here to keep score and keep the peace. I'm on it. <laughs> okay. Uh, notepad ready? It's ready. Okay. It's bright green, so okay. I won't lose it. All right. Fabulous. Um, Let's get started with the elder statesman, Scott, the baby boomer. You are in the hot seat. Wahoo. (laughs) Seems pretty excited. I could feel the energy (laughs) emanating. Yes. Do this thing. Okay, here's your first question. This one is from Andrea, so this is something millennials would be more apt to know. In this Disney Channel original movie released in 1999, Cody Griffin is living a great life. He's a star swimmer, and a girl named Sam shows interest in him, and his adoptive family loves him. Then he starts turning into a merman. What is the name of the movie? You know, just a what typical a, life. You just start turning into a merman. Yeah. What a deep I, I think story it's funny life. that Mark said merman. <laughs> Thank you. Merman, like, sorry. A, like Ethel. I was trying to be... <laughs> <laughs> yes, that too. The boomers will get that. Uh-huh. All right. He, he turned into a merman. I'm just laughing because everyone else is laughing. That's uh-huh. all. All right. So your options are the 13th year, Johnny Tsunami, the color of friendship, or A Ring of Endless Light. All good titles. All yeah. Disney Channel original movies. Okay. I disagree on the titles, actually. <laughs> that's, that's my vote, but, you know, it's just one. <laughs> I thought it was going to be The Sweet Life of Cody Banks. Huh? Oh, no. <laughs> what, wasn't that, wasn't that oh, Sweet Life something? of Zach and Cody. Something. That, that is one, yes. that is one of them. Okay, read me the title. All right. Uh, the thirteenth year, Johnny Tsunami, the color of friendship, or a ring of endless light. What was the name? It was released in 1999. Disney Channel original movie. Johnny Tsunami. Okay, good guess. It is actually the thirteenth year. Good guess. Pretty good strong. 
Oh, well, right. I just there, want there was a water tie-in. I just want you to know when Disney Plus came out, I was this was my movie as a kid. So I went and was like, I'm so excited to rewatch this. It is the cringiest movie you will ever watch as an adult in your life. It's horrible. <laughs> it's terrible acting. It's horrible. Okay. Well, I just want Boomer Scott to know that if he wanted to order one of those mermaid, like you can actually order a mermaid. Um, you know, the bottom so that when you go swimming. Uh huh. So if he ever wanted to be a merman, there, there's a possibility there. I just wanted him to know his options. Thanks, Christy. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. <laughs> Translated, there's not a chance in the world that's happening. <laughs> All right. Uh, that would be a point for the millennials. Woo! All right. Got it down. Okay. Um, All right, next up is a question from Christy. This is something Gen X would be more apt to know. In her early teenage years, young Christy was quick to take notice when an intelligent young gentleman appeared before her. Mm -hmm. In this case, it was the medical prodigy Dr. Douglas Hauser, a.k.a. Doogie Hauser, M.D. Oh, yeah. Ooh. (laughs) Um, I used to love this show. Uh, the television series followed Doogie's daily trials as a surgeon and his desire to be a normal teenager who just wanted to borrow his dad's car and take teenage Christy out on a date. Mm-hmm. Of course. That's what I thought, anyway. Uh-huh. All right, so Doogie had a best... <laughs> I don't remember that part. <laughs> it's in the sequel. It was, it was like, in it the was script. subtle plot line. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's plot. Christy's script in her head. Uh, Doogie had a best friend on the show, though. Who also caught the eyes of many young teenage girls. Who was Doogie's best friend? What was his name? Andrew, have you have you heard of Doogie Hauser? No. <laughs> okay. Well, actually, we talked about this the other day in the office, but I all thought you guys were saying Dewey Hauser. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> No, Mark, do you remember this show? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 It was a then pretty he, big hit. He would, like, write on his computer, like, a journal at the end, Yes, right? at the end. Remember. He'd always okay. kind of, like, have like some... Deep thoughts from Doogie. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or not so deep. Speaking of journal entry, that, that question was pretty... <laughs> that was a journal <laughs> entry in its own. I was Even inspired. Even for Christy. I was yeah. inspired uh-huh. by Doogie. It was a two-pager. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Andrea, here are your options. Wait, wait, wait. This oh wait, no, question. Scott. Sorry, yes. Yeah. Okay, Scott. Thank you. Sorry. If Andrea knows, I'll I'll, I'll okay. defer. Team up. Scott, have no. you seen Doogie Hauser? I, I, I okay. remember the show. Okay, so he's got a little memory that that did. Do you remember right. who played Doogie Hauser? It's the guy that was yeah, I don't remember, it's Patrick something or other. Yeah, Neil yeah. Patrick okay. Harris. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost asked that question, but I thought he might remember that. Yeah. I, I do right. remember that. Doogie's best friend's name was it Joey, Vinny, Leo, or Freddie? If I was Doogie Hauser and I was a young prodigy, uh-huh. prodigy doctor surgeon, doctor surgeon dude, <laughs> I would definitely need a sidekick named Freddy. Okay, mm. wow. all right. I like the reasoning. The best friend of Doogie Hauser, MD, was Vinny. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah those tough. Those are all like the that's Italian tough. lobster names. So. <laughs> That too. Vinny. All right. Okay, so that would be a point for Gen X. Chaplain Justin, score update, please. Yeah, millennials with one, Gen X with one, and Boomers so far with zero. All right. My suspicion is not for long. <laughs> Round two's coming up. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. 90.9 KLRC. <laughs> It's Wednesday morning. It's round two of the Wednesday game, Battle of Generations. Uh, Gen X one, Millennial one, Boomers zero. Andrea, you are in the hot seat. Feeling hot, hot, hot. <laughs> that sounds painful. It's really hot. <laughs> You know, it's warm this week. The hot seat is not great this week. Okay. All right. (laughs) Uh, So your first question is from Scott the Baby Boomer. So a chance for Scott to get on the board or for you to take the lead. Okay. Your first question, again, this is something Baby Boomers would be more apt to know. Before Robert Stack hosted the popular Unsolved Mysteries series, which was in the 80s and 90s, he played the role of Elliot Ness. In which 1960s television crime drama? Mm. Wow, Scott! I wish everybody could see 
Andrea's face in the reading of that question. <laughs> She's like, completely puzzled. What is this? I'm going to get new wrinkles on my face as I get older from these questions. Like, you, you, what? You remember Unsolved Mysteries, though, right? Do you know about Unsolved Mysteries? No. That was no. such a great show. <laughs> it's like day <laughs> nine so and so <laughs> It's no idea. I have no idea any of this. Oh, yeah. It was a classic show yeah. for a long time. Okay, well, oh, no. I can give you options. I would love and options. And he had, like, the best voice, too. The best, the yes, best narrating. narration voice. Yeah. It's kind of like the Dateline NBC guy. It's yes. It's pretty, yeah. Someone send me a YouTube clip after this. <laughs> okay. I got you. Um, all Thank right, you. so he played the role of Elliot Ness in which 1960s television crime drama? Okay. Was it Dragnet, Gangbusters, The Untouchables, or Manhunt? Oh, man. This is a total guess. <laughs> there is no logic to why. Okay. It's just it's just total doing shot it. In the dark. Yep, Manhunt. Manhunt? Okay. Sure. In 1960s, he played the role of Elliot Ness... In the Untouchables. Oh. Okay. It was an early drama about the adventures of the FBI. Which interesting. Do you think that was that the kind of the what was behind the movie The Untouchables that came out had Kevin Costner and several? Okay, there yep. you go. Prequel to that was a great movie. It by was the, the way. It was a, and it was a book. By okay. Elliot Ness before it was really yeah. Y'all just have a great conversation here. <laughs> wow. I'm just sitting like, here. I don't care. I, don't know. I have no idea what you're talking about. All right, so that is a point for the baby boomers. Mm. We're all tied up, right? Tied up at one, according to this sticky note. <laughs> okay, all right, which is what we're going with. <laughs> all right, so um, Andrea, here's your next question. This one's from Christy. So something Gen X would be more apt to know. Okay. Captain Kangaroo was a children's television series that aired weekday mornings on CBS for 29 years. Wow. Do you remember <laughs> Captain Kangaroo? That's almost as old as me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was built around the life in the treasure house. Captain Kangaroo would tell stories, he would meet guests, and indulge in silly stunts with characters, both humans and puppets. Oh. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, who played Captain <laughs> Kangaroo? Oh. <laughs> Shoot, Lauren! I don't I need I, you. Like I know Captain Kangaroo. I have no idea. Yeah. This Wait, is, was I, he like in a costume or like a voice or? No, he was just a regular middle aged guy. Um, but he was called Captain Kangaroo because he his jacket had big pockets on it, kind of like a kangaroo. Oh, yeah, that's he was fun. He was the captain. I love it. Did he have actual kangaroos in his jacket? No. Oh, that would have been next level. That would have been though. That's a yeah. great idea. Mm. Bring it back. We got to do it. Okay, here are your options. Okay, is it Bob Keeshan? Clayton Moore, John Hart, or Adam West? You know, wait a minute. Okay. Is this a this is a kid show, right? Yes. Yes. Hundred you percent. Know, if you have Hart in your last name, I just feel like <laughs> this is again a shot in the dark, right? But if you have okay. Hart in your last name, it just sounds like you should be your career is set from your birth. You're on a kid show. Okay, That's like it. you were destined to be. Her yeah. logic Captain is Kangaroo. a lot like mine. <laughs> I've been hanging out with you too much. <laughs> there's, there's no logic to the logic. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Baffling, but still entertaining. <laughs> All right. So I'm Captain here, Kangaroo for 29 years was played by Bob Keeshan. Oh. Hey, do I get extra points if I can tell you who those other three guys were? <laughs> no, 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 just for fun. Why not? You know, Clayton Moore, John Hart. Clayton Moore was the Lone Ranger. Oh, okay. Whoa. Adam, was it Adam West? Adam West was Batman. Batman? Yeah. Okay. Oh, All right. I did who's not. Uh, John Hart. Heart? I don't actually remember that. <laughs> no, bonus. <laughs> no bonus points. But, but not a kid's show. But, but not a kid's show yet. All right. Uh, score update. Chaplain Justin. Got Boomers 1. Gen X 2. Right? And Millennials 1. Okay. All right. Got a tight job. matchup. Christy heading into the final round with the lead. Woo-hoo. Good morning, Captain. Good morning, Captain. Good morning, Captain. Good morning, Captain. Good morning. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. 90.9 KLRC. It's down to the final round of the Wednesday game Battle of Generations. Chaplain Justin, score update for us. And we got Boomers with one, Gen X two, Millennials one. Okay. All right. So uh, in a moment, we'll put Christy in the hot seat here. Final round. This is a chance for you to keep your 
winning streak alive. That's right. I am right now, I have the cheese medallion. So I am a, a reigning champ. Uh-huh. And uh, just want to say on behalf of all Gen Xers, you're welcome. <laughs> and thank you for all your support. Okay. okay. You haven't won yet. Yeah. You know, the, <laughs> okay. I, don't, I don't know how well the pre-victory speech <laughs> right. works out for right. people. But, but we'll, we'll check it out. We'll I see. Mean, you know, imaginary <laughs> points for confidence. All right, Christy, <laughs> you are in the hot seat. All right. Um, so, first question is from Andrea. If she gets this, ties ties things up. Uh-oh. Uh, otherwise, you take a pretty commanding lead. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. In the Christian movie Extreme Days... Four friends embark on one last road trip adventure, surfing, skating, snowboarding, even paintballing across the West Coast. Wow, that sounds amazing. (laughs) It was. (laughs) Uh, When Jessie surprises Ryan on the plane, what nursery song does she finally sing to him? Is it like a nursery rhyme? Like nursery song? Yeah, like a nursery song. Uh, okay. Don't worry, there's options. Okay. So Jesse surprises Ryan on the plane. What nursery song does she finally sing to him? Is it Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? Old MacDonald had a farm. Itsy Bitsy Spider or the Farmer in the Dell? I just want you to know this is an Anson and Kara question because I went to them and I said, name something from your millennial childhood. And they said, we watched this so many times at youth group. I'd only seen it a few times at a friend's house. Okay. But this might like connect with the older millennials. Christian movie, Extreme Days. Mm. All right. Chaplain Justin, have you seen this? It, Anson and Kara tried to show me a clip on, a, on the way to a retreat and I wanted it to stop immediately. <laughs> That was my take. <laughs> okay. You can watch the entire thing for free on YouTube. Okay, it that says a lot true. now, too. Do you know this, Scott? My kids had this on a VHS tape. Yeah. <laughs> on a VHS tape, wow. yes. Okay. Um, yes, they did. So, the Farmer That's in the awesome. Dale and Farmer in the Dale, uh-huh. Farmer in the Dale. <laughs> okay. She has what was say. the one before that one? Uh, Itsy Bitsy Spider, Old MacDonald Had a Farm, oh, or Twinkle McDonald. Twinkle Little Star. Ooh, man. The Does... whole thing of the movie was Jesse can't sing. And so the fact that she sings this song okay. was like... Breakthrough. <gasps> Move of the spirit. She loves him. Is <laughs> okay. what it was. What for, with that? Well, the girls felt that way. I don't know about the boys. Again, I wanted the movie to stop. <laughs> I can't emphasize that enough. <laughs> All right, Christy, what do you think? I'm, I'm going to say maybe Farmer in the Dell just because... You got to really kind of sing that. Okay. I, I don't know. All right. If Andrea gets this, you're all tied up. Otherwise, Christy takes the lead. It was the farmer in the Dell. Oh! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Wow. I mean, it's fate. That's all I know. Uh huh. It really is worth going to YouTube and just start it. Uh, wow. Ignore Justin. Disagree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One final question. Christy has secured a victory here, so the pressure's off. Oh, yeah. Uh, But this is a chance for Scott to score another point for the Baby Boomers. All right. Your question is, where might budding boomer biologists go to obtain sea monkeys? Oh. I, I actually love sea monkeys. But I need options. <laughs> as okay. much as I love them. All right. Uh, was it the pet store, comic book ads, ride in to Mr. Wizard, TV show, the TV show, or the drug store? Oh, okay. I'm not tracking here. Was this a with childhood this, thing for you, Scott? This when question. was this? About the, okay, childhood. Yeah. Shaking I mean, I okay. would say, I mean, definitely, probably you could ask Mr. Wizard. I remember Mr. Wizard. Um you know what? He used to do this thing where he'd hold an egg, and if he gripped it all the way around, like I guess the pressure would keep it from breaking, and it was pretty awesome. So I I did it over at some friend's house. I was like trying to show him Mr. Wizard, and <laughs> and I had egg yolk all over the kitchen. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> Multiple times. <laughs> and I remember my friend's mom was like, "What are y'all doing?" And they're like, "Christy's Mr. Wizard." Like, but it was terrible. Anyway. Um, I'm just going to go with Mr. Wizard because I love him. To to quote Chaplain Justin, (laughs) make it stop. (laughs) Make it stop.
was a Chris, uh, picture of Christy like, no, guys, really, Mr. Wizard, no, this time. Yeah, yeah. No, this yeah, time. Yeah, really. this I, I literally did it like three seven times. Seven eggs later. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. It never worked, exactly. so I don't know what he was doing. But All right, so... Where my budding boomer biologists go to obtain sea monkeys? Comic book ads. Oh, okay, okay. Hey, you know what? That's okay, though. That's okay. (laughs) Because you're still ahead. Because I still want. Was this a big deal in comic books, I'm assuming? Uh, You know what sea monkeys were? Uh Uh-huh, okay. Sea monkeys were the little brine shrimp. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the ads for them had like the mama sea monkey and the baby sea monkey oh, and the daddy sea monkey, sea monkey family. and the mama and the daddy had the little crowns on that was the that was the cartoon ad okay but the ads showed up saying you could send away for your sea monkeys okay uh, in the back of almost every comic book uh huh so a big deal with two brothers in the house you had the three of us <laughs> between the, we had a ton of comic That's books it. yeah and so, yes, we actually sent off for our sea monkeys one time, and we're very disappointed that there were no discernible crowns on the heads of our sea monkeys. <laughs> the, the brine yeah. shrimp just really... <laughs> not the same. It's like, why do you even call these monkeys of any sort? <laughs> these aren't real. Have, have you talked to anyone about that? <laughs> <laughs> Chaplain Justin will be here to process that yeah, with we, you. We might process it. <laughs> just a little I'm, bit. I'm not bitter over it. No. It's just, no. no. Hey, valiant effort by Scott and the Baby Boomers. Um, that was two points for you guys. Um, Andrew, well done. Picked up a point for the millennials. We tried. It's fine. Good effort. Yeah. And two weeks in a row, the victory goes to Jen. Yes! X. Thank you all. Thanks for coming out today. I do have an unsolved mysteries quote. Okay. From Robert Stack. Ready. Okay. The tagline. For every mystery, someone somewhere knows the answer. Perhaps that person is watching tonight. Perhaps it is you. Ooh, oh, that's right. I feel like that was yeah. meant for me. <laughs> yes, that, that quote was directly directed for to you. me. All right. Congratulations, <laughs> <No doubt>. Jet X. <laughs> Way to go, Christy. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. 90.9 KLRC. Chaplain Justin is in the house. Good morning. Good morning, Chaplain Justin. No. Thanks for hanging uh, uh, hanging out with us and bringing all your wisdom up in here. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay, we'll here. see. You. <laughs> Time will tell. We, uh, we did want to ask you about this. Uh, just the other day, Christy and I were talking about, Christy's been listening to some good motivational talks. And okay. They were talking about the, um, the connection to our spiritual and the physical, like our physical bodies, right? Yes, yeah. And I was thinking, as she was talking, that man, a lot of times it feels like to me, maybe just maybe my experience, but in the American church, a lot of times we keep those things separate, mm-hmm. right? You know, yeah. hey, if you're struggling, go read your Bible, go right. pray. Mm-hmm. And never comes up like, maybe like God designed our bodies to do something too. Mm-hmm. Like that part of kind of reconnecting, refocusing might be even a physical solution as well Mm -hmm. so we're curious your take on it wow goodness there's a lot of layers to this um (laughs) let's see let's start way back in the day uh you'll see it in the epistles in the new testament that there is a key heresy that was floating around in the church that had to do what was called gnosticism which basically said the spirit is good the body is bad hmm and whenever we talk about kind of the common, you know, like you're, you're saying, it's like, we're actually kind of in that we're sometimes. We're still going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is, th- you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old. <laughs> yeah. And so, but did God create the soul and the body is the question, you know? Um, whenever we are in heaven, will we be disembodied spirits? No. We'll have resurrected bodies that will be free from sin and all the effects of sin. And so what would that look like to uh, kind of anticipate that heavenly kind of being, soul and body, interconnected, that's pure and holy in the here and now? Uh, Well, they're going to be connected. Uh, Theologically, another way to say it is psychosomatic. We are psychosomatic beings, which is just a Latin dead language way of saying soul and body beings interconnected. Yeah. And so... 
what we do with our souls, say worshiping uh, scripture and things like that, can affect our bodies. You can even see that in heart rate, blood pressure. Mm. You can see that with uh, a boost in the immune system. The studies have gone through this. Um, you could go the other way around. Uh, our bodies, say exercising uh, 30 minutes, can improve mood. In fact, it does improve mood. So uh, even someone who has major depressive disorder and really goes through it, the lows, can consistently exercise um, for at least 30 minutes and it will help. It won't cure, it won't fix, but it it will help them walk through the day better. Mm. And so um, let alone, let's say I'm riding my bike and I'm listening to worship music and I'm singing. Right. So now we're compounding the positive effects, both spiritual and physical. Yeah, yeah. And I think God's happy with that. And I think it helps us. That's really good. That's awesome. Yeah. um, One gentleman I was listening to was just talking about the the quickest, and you and I have talked about this too, Justin, um, quickest way to just change your emotional state of being is to get physically active. Mm -hmm. Like, And that, that could look like just going for a walk. Right. Or truly as simple as adjusting your body and just breathing differently, Mm -hmm. you know, and just really paying attention to your physical and that will then change your state of being emotionally. Like there's so much power in that. And uh, I appreciate that because I do, I think you're right, Mark. Sometimes we forget in the church body that your physical body is just as important as, Mm -hmm. as your spiritual, Mm -hmm. you know, in your brain, even what we know about the brain now is a lot of our executive functioning and thinking, being able to reason is in our prefrontal cortex. But whenever our emotions are flooded, our prefrontal cortex is shut off. Mm-hmm. One of the best ways to turn it back on is to move physically, and then you'll be able to think better to work through your emotions and make a good choice. Yeah. So all these things are connected. And what a perfect week this week with this weather. Yeah, right? absolutely. To do a little something good for our soul. Go yeah. outside, go for a walk yeah. or a jog or whatever, you know, something. Mm-hmm. Play yeah. with the kids outside just to stir the good stuff in us. Yeah, and yeah. worship as we go. Let's yeah. take advantage of it. Mm, that's so good. Today when I'm playing pickleball, I'm just going to yell out, I'm working on my prefrontal cortex. <laughs> yeah, that'll help you make <laughs> friends for sure. <laughs> Thanks, Chaplain Justin. You're welcome. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. 90.9 KLRC. Um, so the Carnival Cruise Line ship just rescued one of them. Two people who were stranded in a kayak on Monday in the middle of the ocean. Carnival's Jubilee crew discovered the two men off the coast of Mexico, uh, Isla Mueres. The pair said they had been using the kayak to stay afloat after their boat sank. So they're out in the middle of it, just in a kayak. Uh, The news came after another boat, boat, the uh, Carnival Vista, rescued six men near the Dominican Republic last month. After their cargo vessel capsized, it also happened with the uh, Carnival Mardi Gras a few months ago when they had to rescue some stranded sailboat folks in August. So those cruise ships. Yeah. Maybe maybe those that were stranded planned that. By the way, the they story were like, does say they don't get to stay on the cruise ship. <laughs> oh, they don't get no, to stay. No, I was thinking maybe tra- they were like, you know, the Carnival like, Cruise Line does come through this right. area. If so we go out on a kayak. Yeah, look really, really rough. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. New free wait vacation till they plan. cruise by. Something and, like that. Hey, help, help. Do you guys have a buffet? 